Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jake P with Katoma. I'm gonna give you a rundown of some of the features and fittings of the uh, switchblade pack system. Uh, some, some detail that's not included in our public overview video. I'm gonna go into some of the, um, some of the uh, features of the frame set specifically and how it indexes with the, uh, the multiple components of the switchblade system. I'm particularly gonna be talking today about the, uh, the heavy weapons load carriage. Um, the, uh, the project began with uh, Ranger Regiment at Fort Bing. What they initially asked for was a way to carry ammunition, spare barrels, and tripod for the M240 machine gun. Um, particularly complicated system to carry. Uh, lots of heavy components, ammunition's heavy, cumbersome. Uh, everybody knows that it's been a problem for a long time. Um, we knew that this pack system would have to be tough, versatile, all the things that good military equipment needs to be. Um, and we began playing around with the idea of modularity. Um, but then as we began taking this idea to more conventional army units, we knew it would have to go modular on this to be able to um, carry the multiple different components and uh, serve more and more jobs with this system uh, as it showed more and more promise. Um, from a previous uh, relationship with Granite Gear, uh, we had a patent that we co-owned with them that we co-designed uh, for the Chief Patrol Pack, uh, the Chief Frame Set. Um, the, the frame sheet of the Chief was uh, made of carbon fiber, uh, had really ergonomic curvature, um, and a really strong spine that we knew could be um, a good starting place for this project. Uh, we took that frame set and um, made a lot of changes, um, made, it more, uh, made it a little more narrow, reduced the weight, uh, reinforced the spine to make it even stronger for, uh, for the heavy carriage that we knew the heavy weapon stuff might, uh, might demand. And um, you're seeing the, uh, the result of that experiment right here. Um, the carbon fiber frame sheet portion of this system is the most expensive part and the most important part for uh, making, it, uh, making it what it is today. Um, it's fully adjustable for torso length and height. That was an important feature to be able to fit that 95th percentile of soldiers across the board. Um, the shoulder straps and waist belt are fully articulating. Um, that has been a really... Uh, really advantageous ergonomic feature um, when going over uh, rough terrain, um, also reducing fatigue and that sort of thing. I want to uh, go right quick into uh, the fitment um, of the frame set. Uh, that's the first thing the soldier would want to do upon receiving this, uh, this unit. Um, the instructions that come with the packs are pretty clear on how to measure uh, a soldier's torso and how to select uh, which particular setting is gonna fit them best. Uh, most guys are going to be pretty close um, when the when the pack arrives to them. Uh, the the shoulder straps will be uh, applied to one of the middle settings right here, which is going to fit most guys, and they'll probably just know, hey, it's a little shorter, a little long. I can just move this up or down one setting, and uh, and be all right to go. Um, but we do include uh, really clear instructions, in-depth instructions on how to measure and adjust this, uh, and grab a battle buddy and a fabric tape uh, tape measure to measure the torso length and height and adjust this. But again, it may not be necessary. Um, so to do that, uh, it's just a single plunger on the pin here. It's going to pop through the leash and the frame set. So grab the cylinder. That pops right out. You notice the leash fell off here. This leash is not critical for the function of the pack. The soldier loses this guy. The pack's still going to function perfectly. Uh, the function of this guy is to uh, protect the frame set from long-term wear and tear from the pin, the plunger rubbing against the backside of the frame set. But again, not uh, critical to the function of the, of the pack. So to keep up with, not critical. All right, so now the soldier has his shoulder straps loose. He is now prepared to uh, reapply them for his particular fitment um, according to his measurements. He's a little shorter, we're gonna move these guys down. A couple of notches here. Pop it back through, reapply the pin, and he's now adjusted for his own, his own fitment there. A uh, very simple system to, to adjust. And uh, now I'm going to go into uh, how to insert the frame set into the multiple components of the system here. This particular kit is set up for the uh, M240AG. Um, this is kind of the flagship of the, of the system, the most components, and uh, uh, where the project started. So we're going to go into some details on this one, uh, starting with the uh, the back panel here, where the, the frame sheet inserts. Uh, each component of the system has a uh, similar configuration, identical configuration. In fact, uh, the raid pack and the assault pack, and uh, some some coming components that are that have not been introduced yet as well, have the same setup. So you'll notice the uh, the top panel portion right here has this, this black section right here. 
this fabric is called Rip Force. It's a Kevlar reinforced abrasion resistant fabric. Uh, a single piece of this fabric loops underneath and back down and around and is double stitched right here. Uh, the pack is designed to basically hang from this section on the frame set, uh, making an, uh, a very durable um, contact position. This is going to bear the, the majority of the weight and abrasion of the, of the pack system. So this was very important for us to uh, get right. You notice the same fabric down here. Um, this is uh, this holds the lower portion of the frame set in place. And since there's a good bit of movement uh, and abrasion right here, we use the same reinforced fabric. Um, that rip force fabric is also used in some key places like uh, the shoulder strap attachments where they're sewn through. That Kevlar fabric is underneath um, where the uh, shoulder straps, uh, on the shoulder straps themselves where they attach to this is also reinforced with ripstop material um, to avoid any kind of tears right there. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the frame, frame set right here. First things first, we're going to align the top portion of the frame set. It slides right into its slot right there. Very simple. Next, uh, we're going to attach the, uh, the tail piece. The easiest thing to do is to turn the belt sideways, fold it over to expose the slot in the bottom of the frame set. Make sure you guys can see that there. this guy in half and tuck it right through the slot. Pull it down nice and tight and attach it to the Velcro on the back of the component, in this case the molly panel. The belt has to be turned with the tag facing down. And then we have six attachment points around the perimeter of the component, around the perimeter of the frame sheet here. We're going to start with the, uh, the belt stabilizers. Notice the surface mount buckle on the component itself and a side release buckle on the belt. Got one on each side. The shoulder strap, the surface mount buckle is where I mentioned the reinforced uh, uh, Kevlar material is located. Put your other shoulder strap. And then at the top, have attachments for the uh, load lifters. These right now are snap-on buckles, have recently been changed to side release buckles. Um, by the end of the year, the packs coming off the line will have the side release buckles. We, just, we figured that was just a slightly more ergonomic way to, uh, to attach your load lifters there. And then of course you got your, uh, your uh, chest strap as well there. All right, so now this uh, now this 240AG pack is set up for carriage, um, but right quick I wanted to backtrack and show you guys uh, how to remove the frame set and how to set the frame set up for body armor compatibility. Um, with this nice heavy frame pad right here, the, uh, the soldier is going to have uh, plenty of ventilation and comfort from the, uh, from the frame pad itself, but with body armor on it could cause the pack to sit a little further off the back than the soldier may like, so our solution for that uh, was to be able to just remove that frame pad, so I'm going to show you how to do that right quick. To remove the frame set, just reverse the order of operations there. Unbuckle your six attachment points. And pop the tail. I want to mention about this tail piece right here. Uh, it's just Velcro attachment. It's not load bearing at all. That's the reason we decided to go with that. Its main purpose is to keep the, the pack frame from shifting left to right. Um, very simple piece there. Our frame set slides right out. I'm going to reverse some more of operations here. First, we're going to go ahead and pop this belt out. Same plunger as before. Belt is loose. Shoulder straps are loose. Hang on to that leash. This time I'm going to actually go ahead and remove the shoulder straps from the frame pad itself instead of pulling them off together. Keep those guys handy. And now the only thing on the frame set, of course, is the frame pad held on by a single tail piece. This guy slides off. You can see that's about the same thickness as a plate right there, so it makes sense for that field to remove for, uh, for uh, body armor compatibility. All right, we're gonna pop these guys right back in the setting that we had measured before. Go back with the leash. And then the waist belt goes back on. 
situation, same features, same reapplication to the uh, to the component. It's now set up for body armor. Next, we're going to go into some uh, features of the M240 pack. I'm going to reset it here and we'll keep going. All right, now I'm going to go into the configuration of the uh, M240A G pack as kind of a demonstrator for how many of the, uh, uh, the heavy weapons load carriage kits actually work. Um, uh, in our system, uh, a kit is for an individual soldier, a system is for a team. This is the M240AG kit. Uh, I showed you recently how to uh, put the frame set into the component. In this particular case, and almost all of the heavy weapons um, kits, uh, the frame set is going to be mounted into a molly panel. On the molly panel will be mission specific gear. In this case, ammunition, spare barrels, and tripod. And on the outside will be a raid pack for personal sustainment. Um, there have been uh, pack designs in the past from other companies that try to solve the same problem as far as carrying the, uh, the weapons equipment. Uh, but the issue was there was nowhere to carry the packing list gear. Um, so by creating the stacking system that we had with the switchblade, we've solved that problem of being able to carry the, the uh, mission specific gear and the personal sustainment gear. Uh, the way that we did that was a simple uh, grid system where all the components attach to the other components in a similar location. So uh, you'll notice that the pack is attached to the molly panel using three side release unibuckles. The unibuckle is a patented proprietary design of ours designed specifically for this system uh, to eliminate the redundancy of male and female buckles at each attachment point. Um, pretty, cool, uh, pretty cool piece there. So those three um, attached there, the raid pack swings right open. You can see on the back panel uh, the same attachment points for the frame set. So with this kid, a soldier for a training mission or whatever, could pull his frame set out of the molly panel, insert it exactly the same way into the raid pack, and uh, he's got an incredibly capable uh, 45 liter rucksack there, and he can leave this stuff behind as needed. Um, six more buckles, and the raid pack can be unattached completely and be cached behind. Um, if approaching a, a firing position or whatever, uh, the AG can cache his personal sustainment gear and carry his weapon specific gear on his back, or he can even remove this component called the spare barrel quiver. And carry his tripod in the front, the spare barrels, on the inside, heat rated to 1500 degrees. Uh, can store hot or cold spare barrels. So as the AG is working the weapon, he can drop a hot barrel here. Needs to displace, all he's gotta do is close this back up, a single buckle, and grab the handles, and he's ready, to, he's ready to rock and roll. This particular setup was designed to be a fold open workstation for the AG. So leave those three buckles unattached. The weapon goes down, the pack goes down, this portion folds open, single buckle right here opens up an uh, ammunition pouch carrying 300 rounds of belted ammunition that feed directly to the weapon. No need to do anything else but unbuckle that single piece. Uh, this pouch can be opened completely uh, to be loaded neatly. Um, it's just smooth plastic on the inside to avoid any sort of snags there. It's got that same Kevlar reinforced rip force fabric at the front. Uh, one of the cool features of this is um, Let's say a team shoots out 100 rounds of their 300 they need to displace. All you have to do is tuck that tag end over the top, fold the top, the lid back over, and buckle it, cinch it down, and now that tag end is held in place so that at the next location, um, all the AG needs to do is grab it and attach it to the weapon. He's not going to be digging down in here looking for his tag end. Those are some of the, the, the small features that we try to incorporate into this to make this not only more ergonomic, but also faster, more lethal, and uh, safer for these guys to uh, get in and out of uh, get in and out of position. I want to point out right here that um, the three, excuse me, the six buckles that attach the uh, spare barrel quiver to the system are snap-on buckles. So, uh, in the case that the AG did not necessarily want to carry the spare barrel quiver or wanted to attach something else here, these guys can just be removed. And, uh, and uh, placed aside. Of course, you could snap this into this to, to, for storage or whatever to keep up with it. Just that out. Snap these guys back in place. Notice on the same grid system as the, the outer attachment. Um, in, 
this configuration, I want to point out right quick that um, if the soldier has uh, cash, his personal sustainment gear behind in his raid pack, um, he still has a way to carry his water with his weapon specific gear in the form of the hydro sleeve. The hydro sleeve, as all parts of this, this system, is removable from the molly panel and can be mollied onto the outside of the pack, the, the, the outer edge, total shooter's preference there, um, very easily attached molly uh, hydration carriers there. Just want to point that out right quick. Three more buckles here. We'll go into a couple of uh, features of the pack itself. The raid pack is 45 liters, um, designed to carry uh, basic packing list equipment, um, MREs, water, etc. Uh, this pack is a front loading pack. There's no uh, traditional lid or top loading for this. As a 45 liter bag, we felt it would be a little redundant to have front opening and top opening for this so we kept the sides clean kept the top clean uh, it does still have a pocket on the top a waterproof zipper um, open the front access here uh, a lot of traditional pack features here got some small item storage i got a couple of long pockets on the side that can store um, regular shaped small items or extra spare batteries um, or a hydration pack there's one of those on each side that can be routed through the top or the bottom uh, for shooter's preference for running those hydration tubes. A uh, really important feature of this bag is the internal compression. Uh, we strongly recommend that uh, the end user use the internal compression when loading this pack. One, to stabilize their load, and two, to protect their zippers. Um, if they're cramming this thing full and having to force the zippers closed, no zipper is gonna uh, survive that for, for long. So we really recommend using the internal compression. That's pretty important for, for any pack in this pack um, as well. I got a small molly panel on the inside. Uh, for mounting, whatever. Set this guy up. Uh, same pouches that I mentioned on the inside, redundant pouch on the outside that opens from the top. Nice for loading, uh, again, hydration storage or, uh, or gun cleaning, whatever long kit might be needed for that pocket. Let's see, what else here? That may cover it for the raid pack. Um, if a unit or a CO or a user decides that they need a little more space than the 45 liters, or um, particularly with cold weather units where the 45 liters just isn't enough to carry the cold weather gear, uh, the assault bag is about 62 liters. Um, that bag is basically the same uh, footprint as this bag so that it fits with the system well, but it's about two inches deeper to add that, uh, add that uh, additional uh, volume there. Two inches doesn't seem like a lot, but it does a lot for the internal volume when when packing the bag here. Uh, salt pack attaches exactly the same way. Um, a lot of the same features, except it does have top access and a removable lid. All right, got another kit for us to look at here. This is the mortar gunner kit. Um, our three man and four man mortar systems are set up for the gunner to carry the mortar tube and a little spare ammo uh, for the mortar AG to carry spare ammo and the tripod and for the uh, ammo bearer to carry rounds only. Uh, um, in this particular case, uh, the gunner, um, same setup as the M240 AG pack. Frame set and a molly panel, weapon specific gear on the molly panel, raid pack on the outside for personal sustainment kit. Same exact scenario, three buckles, Fold open to reveal two ammunition pouches, each carrying two 60 millimeter mortar rounds or one 81 millimeter mortar round, and the mortar tube added bias across each, attached with the lace straps. Uh, these particular uh, components right here are really interesting because they offer a totally versatile, removable, modular skeletonized attachment for any long weapon. In this particular case, the mortar tube um, is attached simply by looping this over and snapping it in place and it's not going, it's not going anywhere. Um, we have it, we, we, we deliver this with the component set up to carry the mortar tube at a bias so that the, the gunner can then look up and his helmet's not gonna hit the tube itself. If, it's, if it were directly vertical, it would be directly behind his, behind his helmet and that could cause some problems. So, but since this is all just mollied on, the gunner uh, could rearrange this however he wanted to. Um, the AG is the exact same components, in fact, 
except that this pouch is moved down uh, side by side with this one so that the T of the bipod can sit, uh, can sit across the top this way. It also uses the, the weapon retention straps to hold it in place there. Um, just as a little demo, I don't have a mortar tube, obviously, but I do have a, a long gun here, and I'll show you how these, uh, how these volley straps can just attach right around the weapon here. I got a couple different lengths. This is the shorter of the volley straps. Show you how much stretch we have here. Just gonna attach that guy. And this one around the top of the weapon. Just doing nice and tight. And you can tell that guy's that's pretty solid. It's not gonna it's not gonna move anywhere. So right quick, I just want to point out the difference between the, uh, the AG and the gunner using the small munition pouches uh, versus the uh, ammo bearer will be using the large munition pouches. Uh, everything about this pouch works exactly the same way, except that it's double in size. And we recommend mounting them this way. Uh, when they're mounted horizontally like this, the rounds are accessible from between the pack and the molly panel without having to uh, actually open the pack up to reach the rounds. Uh, Battle Buddy could even while standing, while the ammo bearer is standing, a battle buddy could walk up and, and remove rounds from this pouch without having to, having to open it up. Uh, it holds four 60 millimeter rounds or two 81 millimeter rounds, mollies right onto the molly panel. Uh, these rounds also hold the goose, um, excuse me, these pouches also hold the goose rounds. Um, uh, I believe it will hold three of most of the goose rounds in their, in their packaging. Um, one of the things that we, one of the features that we added to this pouch to be able to hold some of the longer goose rounds is a, uh, is a Velcro panel at the bottom. The floor of this pouch actually opens up completely and reattaches using Velcro. So if you have a longer round, you can just attach this guy at the very end there, and you can see that you have a lot more length for uh, for, for using the longer rounds. There. Now the top of these pouches is Velcro, of course, as you can hear, but also uh, dual retention with um, with a side release buckle there. Um, inside the pouches, there are Velcro dividers that will help the, the user subdivide this pouch for carrying whatever size ammo he, uh, he's assigned. So that's pretty much gonna cover it for the, uh, for the mortar packs. Uh, you can see how versatile this molly panel makes this thing. Um, the future of this system is, is in this capability, in the ability to be able to take any type of pouch, any sort of comms, attachments, med pouches, uh, breaching equipment, you, you spare tire, you name it. Um, let's figure out how to reach these guys and attach things to this molly panel uh, using this same concept. I think this can be a very versatile, very wide reaching uh, type of system, well beyond uh, just heavy weapons carriage. Um, the rucksacks and the frame sets uh, themselves make this, even just as a basic rucksack, uh, an incredibly um, versatile and durable piece of equipment. Uh, when combined with the capability of the, mo the molly panel and the stacking capability, uh, this truly is, it could be the future of uh, rucksacks in the military. Thanks.